Hey everybody, welcome. So in this video, we are gonna do a walkthrough of supervised fine tuning using Unsloth. Okay, this is not the supervised fine tuning on the Apple Silicon that I refer to. This is using NVIDIA GPUs and it's using Unsloth. So in order to get started, there's two things you're gonna need ahead of time. You're gonna need to have an API key for Hugging Face and an API key for Weights and Biases. So the Hugging Face API key is easy enough to get. Just sign up for Hugging Face and then uh, follow the bouncing ball and get an API key. Make sure though, when you create that API key that it's writable because at the end of the process, after you've created your fine-tuned model, you're gonna wanna push it back up to, to Hugging Face. Then on weights and biases, you can go to wnb.ai forward slash site. You can do the same thing, sign up and get your weights and biases API key. So I'm gonna be running this on, I think it's uh, Ubuntu 2304 and I'm using Python 3.11. So I've got my Python script up here and we're just gonna walk through it. Now, but before we get started, I've installed Python. So let me do a Python minus minus version. And then um, we've installed, we've done pip installs to install all these other things. So we do a pip install for unsloth, torch, PEFT, TRL, hugging face hub, transformers, data sets, and WNB. So once we got that ready to go, I'm gonna go into my Python terminal. Now, the thing you gotta realize is that all of this code is basically setting up all the variables to run this one command, which is the train command. So if we work backwards, what we're doing is we're creating an output directory, and then we're gonna run trainer.train. And if we work backwards, we see that we create the trainer object from SFT trainer, and it has a lot of parameters in it. The parameters include the model LoRa, the tokenizer, the data set fine tune, which actually calls a function, uh, data set text le length, and then your sequence lengths. And then all of these parameters are going into your trainer. So we're running trainer.train, here is trainer up here, and then all of these other functions are basically creating the objects and the variables that need to get passed into trainer.train. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to import some stuff. So I need to import fast language model, torch, autoperf, SFT trainer, support for binary float 16, login for hugging face. So I'm just gonna go here, I'm gonna copy all of these and paste them in. Okay, so now I have imported everything that I need to, um, to run. So in order for me to not have to go through this video and um, pull, out all of my, uh, pull out all of my tokens, I put the tokens in a couple of files. So my hugging face token is in a file called HF token. My weights and biases token is in a token called WNB token. So the next two things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my tokens into my program. Okay, so now I have my hugging face token. And now I have my weights and biases token. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do before I can do anything is I need to log into hugging face. So I'm gonna do login. Now login is something that we actually imported from hugging face hub. So I'm gonna hit login. Now I'm logged into hugging face. Now I wanna log into weights and biases. Okay, so now I am logged in. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initialize my project. So I'm creating an object called run using WNB init. So my project name is fine tune deep seek R1 distilled llama 8B. I'm doing a training job and I am a, I'm allowing anonymous. So I'm gonna hit this and paste that in. Okay, so now, now that I'm ready to go, with my initialized project, I'm gonna set a couple of variables. So the variables I'm gonna set are max sequence length to 2048. That is the number of tokens we can process in one batch. Um, data type, we are just leaving it as the default, and we are going to be running four bit quantization. Now that is really important. Uh, it doesn't really hurt your model very much or your training very much, but it saves a ton of memory. So let me set these variables. 
Okay, now I've got these variables set. And the next thing I want to do is I'm creating two new objects. I'm creating model and tokenizer. And those are coming from fast language model pre-trained. So the name of the model that we're training is from Unsloth. We're uh, fine-tuning DeepSeq R1 Distilled Llama 8B. We're using that maximum token length of 2048. And then these are actually the variables that we had set up here. Okay, but we're also passing in the, the hugging face token that we read from the file earlier. So let me select this. Okay, and you see now that we've initialized this and we're gonna be running Unsloth on my Tesla V100 16 gigabyte uh, GPU. Okay, so the next thing that we're doing is we are creating the prompt styles. So there's two variables here. There's prompt style and training prompt style. These are fairly generic. So in this case, below is an instruction that describes a test paired with an input that provides further context. Write a response that appropriately completes the request. Before answering, think carefully about the question and create a step-by-step -step chain of thoughts to ensure a logical and accurate response. Okay, so then we're declaring the instruction. So we're saying this would be your system prompt. So in this case, we're saying you're a medical expert with advanced knowledge in clinical reasoning, diagnostics, and treatment planning. Please answer the following medical question. And then we have our question and then our response. So this is our prompt style. So I'm going to declare that, copy it, paste it in. Okay, so now the next thing we do is we have our training prompt style. In this case, below is an instruction that describes a task paired with an input that provides further context. Write a response that appropriately completes the request. Before answering, think carefully about the question and create a step-by-step -step chain of thought to ensure a logical and accurate response. So that's the same part. But now what we're doing is we also have the same instruction, but we're throwing these think tags in. And this is how we're going to be documenting the uh, chain of thought inside when it, when it returns um, as the response. So I'm going to copy all of this. OK. So now what I've got is I've got my prompt style, and I got my training prompt style, I've created my model and my tokenizer. Next thing I need to do is I need to get the data set. So in this loading the data set, we are only going to load 200 records from this data set. Now the load data set is coming from Hugging Face. So I'm going to hit command C, command V. Okay, so now I have a data set. So let's view to make sure that it loaded. I'm just going to look at the second record set by doing data set two. And there it is. So I have got some records. So the next thing we're doing is we're setting the end of stream token. So this is the token that tells the model when to stop generating text while you're training it. So we're setting this EOS token and then we're going to print it out. So here, so you notice we have the EOS token is end of sense. Okay, so now we've basically created our token to end the, the text generation. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create this formatting prompts function. Okay, and it takes in examples, which is the training data. And then we're breaking it up into question, complex chain of thought, and response. And then we are formatting it the way it needs to be formatted. So this is going to be create this function. Let me run it to create it. Okay, now it is going to be used right here to create an object called database fine tune. So it's doing a data set map and it's using that function and then it's batching it. So this is creating our data set fine tuning. Okay. So now I have that. Now let's just make sure that it did something because I have in the past not had this code run and then I got stuck right here. So let's database function. Okay, notice I have got some text data set. Okay, so now we're getting into the interesting part. So as I said at the very beginning, trainer is the thing that we're going to run. One of its parameters is model LoRa. So model LoRa is actually taking the model that we created we're doing 16-bit. These are the target modules that are, are being set. And then we're setting this thing called random state. 
And now what random state is doing is this is not, it, this is actually not making it random. This is making it so that it's not random so that we can keep doing it over and over again and, and get the same response and, and test out our other parameters knowing that the random state is set to some fixed number. So I am going to create my model LoRa object Okay, so now we have, we've patched 32 layers, 32 QKV layers, and 32 O layers, and 32 MLP layers. Okay, so now we have created our model LoRa, and this all goes into this trainer object. So now we're creating a trainer object, which is an SFT trainer, and notice we have the model LoRa, we have the tokenizer that we created earlier, we have the data set fine tune that we created earlier. We defined the max sequence length, and then we're going to use two processors. Now, in addition, our training arguments have other stuff in here, like our warm up stats, our number of epics, um, number of logging steps, and all of this stuff. So, we're going to now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create our trainer. And I did get a couple of warnings just because there is a future warning that some stuff we're going to be using eval strategy instead of evaluation strategy. That's really no big deal. Okay, so now we're ready to go. So what we need to do is we need to create an output directory and a merge save directory. So I'm going to do this. Now these are actually not being used at this step. These are going to be used when we get ready to push it to save it and push it to hugging face. But let me create those variables. Okay, and now we're going to train. Okay, so this is where it's going to actually do the work. So everything we've done up until now is setting up for this point. So let me NV and let's train. Okay, so now it's going out. We're at 0% already. So it says our batch size per device. We've got 200 examples. We're going to run three epics. We've got uh, 200 examples, three epics. Um, batch size per device is four, and then our gradient accumulation steps is four, and then our number of trainable parameters is 41 million. So while this is going on, I can actually do an NVIDIA SMI and see what we're doing. Got to spell it right. Okay, now notice that it is actually only, it is running 100% of one of my GPUs. So it's not actually using all eight of my GPUs. There are parameters that we could set to get this thing to divide up and run it across. If we were actually running the entire uh, 45,000 records, we would probably be um, getting it to balance across the rest of the CPUs. Now if we go back over to here, I'm back at 14%. And let me go back to my fine tuning. So now as this is running, let's talk, let's look at what we're going to be doing next. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log out of uh, weights and biases because now we're finished. Okay. Then we are going to save the pre-trained model to the um, output directory. And then we are going to save we're going to do save pre-trained from the tokenizer. So first from the model, then from the, the tokenizer. And then we're going to do this last command, which is going to be the, the push to hub. So the model LoRa will push this to our GitHub. So we actually have one already pushed up because we've run this a couple of times. And we have actually run this with the full... Uh, 45,000 records. So if you go to our if you go to our hugging face and you download this, you will actually get the result of the entire free um, fine tuning. So this is actually a fairly straightforward process. Again, we're really in the end we're running this one command, which is trainer.train, and everything up until that is setting up for it to go. Now notice even with a Tesla V100 GPU and only 200 records, we're currently only at 36%. So I'm not actually going to make you wait for the rest of this. I'm going to cut it off right now. But this is 
an introduction to supervised fine tuning. Now, again, a couple of important things about supervised fine tuning, probably the most important is that what you're doing is you're formatting the output. We're not teaching it new data. We're not teaching it new knowledge. We are just formatting the output and we are making it so that when you ask it the questions, it formats it in the, the out the we it formats it the way we want the whole thing formatted. And it actually works really well based on the training data, or the fine tuning data that we put in. And actually, if you download this model, you'll be very impressed by um, the way it operates. All right, so I will see you next time.